Okay, so now that we've had a good look inside the engine, it's time to screw it all back together, put it on the Power Public Engine Dyno. What the heck? Hey guys, welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today's video, we're gonna be running you through the Vortex Rock GP125 racing engine. It's brand new to us here in Australia for this season. And we're gonna to get to know the engine a little bit better today here with you guys. So let's get to it. You can see the reed cage here on the front of the engine goes straight into the crankcase, very similar to an X30, but it's actually rotated 90 degrees, which is very similar to the Rotax, but it's down into the crankcase, not into the barrel. PVL ignition is very similar to a Galaxy 125, and it's adjustable with these three screws. The engine has a power valve in the exhaust port. And if you look inside the exhaust port, you can see here we've got a, a little auxiliary and that's the same on both sides. The starter motor and Bendix is very similar to the other 125s for self-starting. The clutch assembly looks very similar to the ones that we've been using on the Mini Rock for a few years. And obviously it comes with a front sprocket and it's an 11 tooth. So some of the accessories that come shipped with the engine is a spacer plate for the exhaust, for different exhaust tuning. We've got the exhaust restrictor, obviously we've knocking the OD down to take the performance out of the engine. Then we've got the standard exhaust socket, multi-stage pressed exhaust pipe. This thing looks pretty wicked, so it's gonna make some wicked power. A 30 millimeter Delorto slide carby. This is very similar to what the guys are using in the KZ category, or the Pro Gearbox here in Australia, and the air box and the air filter. So the combustion chamber insert has got a pretty big squish band compared to some of the other engines that we've been working on here in the 125 range anyway. And it actually sits down inside the, the barrel assembly, which we'll show you in a second. And then it's got a couple of recesses here on the outside for the O-rings to seal up around those barrel studs. If you look here, we've got the O-ring in the center that seals the combustion chamber to the, to the barrel. Then we've got our barrel stud O-rings that seals the water jacket around the studs. And then we've got our external one around the outside. And if you look down in the water jacket, you can see the ribs on the outside of the barrel. That'll be for a little bit of extra rigidity and some better cooling interface with the water. So if we're looking in the bottom of the barrel here, we can see there's some pretty big transfer ports here. There's a bridge in the center. And then we've got the boost port at the front. Uh, this is a CNC machined steel liner that's pressed into the aluminum housing, very similar to the X30. This liner, all the port windows are the exact same dimensions, almost perfectly, you know, with modern manufacturing. So each engine should perform almost identically. So the 5395 is the standard size piston that came shipped with the engine. Uh, this piston is very similar to the uh, Rotax style with the ring down on the piston skirt a little bit, or down from the piston crown, sorry, I should say. Whereas the EI armies have the, obviously, the L-shaped dike string, which is right up here on the piston crown. So we've very much got an awesome hybrid engine here that's gonna make some wicked power, and it's gonna be super fun to drive. Okay, so now that we've had a good look inside the engine, it's time to screw it all back together, put it on the Power Public Engine Dyno, and give this uh, guy a run in, and then run it through its paces and get some power figures. So now that we've warmed up the engine, it's time to hit the go button. What the heck? All right, this thing is way down on power. I'm pretty sure last week, if you look at these uh, 
This is our water. Temperature down here, our lambdas, they're a little bit rich, but in the interest of trying to keep the tests all comparative, I don't want to change that too much just yet. But here we've got nearly 20 newton meters of torque at 10,000. It's a pretty flat torque curve by the looks of things. Comes on boost around 8,000, all the way up to 11 and a half. So it's got a nice fat torque curve. But last week's engine, if we just load up another test, this is last week's test versus today's. And water temperature very similar, very similar AFRs, but that torque and power curve is way different. Oh. 20% power through right through the mid range. So maybe we could just check the power valves operating because it's in the top RPM where it should be open. That's probably a logical place to start. Now, as you can see on the screen, we've got two engines overlaid last week's engine when it was brand new versus today's engine, and we've got a drastic reduction in the power in the mid range. That leads me to believe we've got something wrong with the power valve. Now, there is a new spring. It doesn't come shipped with the original engines. So I went up to the local distributor and I got ourselves a new lighter weight spring. So we're gonna pull the power valve apart and just make sure we've got correct power valve operation. Then we're gonna give this engine a second run and we're gonna be able to compare the two results to see how much power we can get out of this little baby. All right, so to remove the power valve, you're just gonna remove the four little cap screws off the back of the black cover. And then there's a spring and it goes down inside here and it goes onto the back of the piston. So this one's operating fine. It just had too much resistance because the original spring was too big. So it stops the valve from opening. The original spring that comes with the engine is this big guy here. This is the one that we're gonna be putting back in. So this is the smaller diameter coil spring and it's 0.8 of a millimeter, as opposed to this original one that came with the engine and that is a one millimeter coils. And also two, it's about 47 millimeters long. And now the new one, it's only 39. So make sure you've got the light duty spring in, otherwise you're gonna have some power valve issues. All right, to put the spring back in, we're just gonna put it onto the piston, put it inside there, and then reattach the four screws. So we're gonna put this little light duty spring in and then give the engine another test run. And that should tell us whether this engine is a beast. All right, guys, so now that we've changed over that power valve spring, we're gonna turn the engine back on and try it again, see how much extra ponies we can get out of it. Damn. Sounds a bit better. All right, so now that we've got the engine all warmed up, it's time for a comparative test. We've got the water at 50 degrees, so this should be the one. So that's the big, big spring versus the little spring. And look at the difference it's made. So just changing that one spring has made all that difference. All, everything you can see here above that solid blue line, same engine. The only thing we've done is change the spring, which has allowed the power valve to open fully so the engine can make maximum power. Without the, without the blade opening, it's, the engine's trying to breathe realistically through the two little auxiliary ports and there's not enough exhaust timing. Now, as you can see from the graph overlay, now the power valve's operating perfectly. It's huge power gains. So make sure you've changed that spring over because that is a bit of a rookie mistake. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, how does the Rock GP compare to the X30? So let's overlay a graph from a previous engine of an X30 over the Rock GP and see how they compare. All right, so what we're gonna see here is all the darker lines, dark red, dark blue, purple, that's the X30 and all those real skinny lines, they're the Rock GP. The Rock GP is making more power almost everywhere and torque. Now, as you can see here, the Rock GP really starts cranking in that mid range between 11 and 13,000 RPM. So that's really gonna hit hard. It's super powerful engine, really. And here in Australia, they're running a restrictor in it. Now, I don't have the restrictor in the engine. That's full power mode and um, yeah, this would be awesome. So it'd be interesting to see how this compares on track with absolutely no restrictor at all. Now while we're at it, we might as well see how the Rotax compares against the engines as well. So let's throw one of those up. All right, so now on the screen, I've got the three engines, Rock GP, 
I am EX30 in the Rotax 125 Senior Max. I've deleted some of the uh, water temperature and EGT to try to clean up the graphs. So let's check it out. And you can see the Rotax versus the X30 are pretty similar, but then in this sort of top, top end slash mid range, the Rock GP is far superior. It's gonna be a super interesting year with the Rock GP. Looks like a fantastic engine. I can't wait to get this thing out on the track and burn some laps. It's really gonna hit hard when it hits the mid-range power band. So there you have it, the Rock GP ready to hit the track and dominate and win. Let us know in the comment section if this engine is for you. We're super keen to get out there and give this thing a rip on the track. It's gonna be so much fun. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that damn like button. It really means a lot to us here at the House of Power and we appreciate everybody tuning in every week. Especially those guys following us on Instagram and Facebook as well, at Power Republic. And everyone that's been going to our amazing website, www.powerpublic.com.au. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.